when he had said, I have esteemed the words of thy mouth, and that's in 23 and 12, I have esteemed the words of, of his mouth more than my necessary food. I desire to know the things of God. The word esteem simply means I hold it dear. I hold dear the word of God. That word doesn't just come by as something that I've read. I've read newspapers. I've read books. I've read all kinds of magazines and all kinds of uh, billboards and everything else. I've read all the, what they call them, uh, the shave cream things when I used to go through Tennessee, they still had them, real cream. And they had a the little sayings out there on one posters on the side of the road. I remember I looked forward to seeing those things. But when after I'd passed and it said brill cream, I laid back down in the back seat and forgot about the rest of it because it didn't mean anything. But when I read the Word of God, it becomes a light. It becomes a light into my pathway. It's a lamp. It is there to guide and direct me. And I, I said, I hold that dear. I revere his word. I hold it above everything else. I don't care what somebody of a learned scale, I don't care how many PhDs or DDs or, or whatever they have behind their name, when they get done, my response is, yes, but the Word of God says. And that settles it. I don't care. We got a new telescope up there. I don't know why that thing worked. I don't know why they have it up there. I think we paid 10 or $12 billion for that thing. They could, I would have given them a, a pair of my old glasses, and they could have used that and give me a little of that, and I could have, Lord of mercy, I don't know what I would have done, but I would have done something with it, I can tell you now. But I, I desire to know the things of God. I value that word. I put a value on it higher than anything else. I know you, you have a, a, a way that you want to go, and like I said, I, I, I don't care what they have to say. I don't care who it is or how educated, educated they, they may be, that don't mean anything to me. That, I, that means absolutely nothing. I've heard, and I'll, I've mentioned this before, that I went to the Bahamas. And I went in there, and wonderful. Bryce Thompson was the overseer. He had us come up and sit on the rostrum with them and where the brethren were. And I mean to tell you, you talking about preaching, them boys shelled corn now. But uh, I was really enjoying myself, been there several days of that convention, and I was going to have to leave. And they had told Brother Thompson that I was leaving. And so he called, called me over to where he was, and I spoke with him, and he said, well, you don't have to leave. The, 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 the cab, now you have to understand, all church folks were the cab drivers and everything else. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. Everybody's out there. They got all your stuff. It's in the cab. They're waiting on you to get there, but you don't leave yet. I said, okay. He said, you won't be late. So he looked over there, and I had been noticing there was a man there and I said, bless his heart. Come to find out he was from Cape Haitia in Haiti. I had been to Haiti. I knew how poor Haiti was. And this man was sitting there and he looked like he had his daddy's old suit on. And his daddy must have been a big man, but he was not. And he was sitting over there, and he had an old Bible that if you had ever opened a page on it, it would have flew all to pieces. That thing had been used. And I watched him, and he just sitting there, and he was very 
indescript. No one else was sitting by him or with him. And I thought that was kind of odd. And so finally, they were going to have some kinds of things that you have in, in convention, church conventions, that were, was not preaching. So Brother Thompson stopped the convention. He turned around, looked at that old brother and said, Brother so-and-so, come up and preach. I said, Lord have mercy. I don't have but about an hour, and I'm going to have to go. Find one of these brethren up here. They look like they know what they're talking about. This man here looks like he came in off the street. Judge not. That old man walked up there, took that Bible, laid it on the rostrum. Never opened a page. And he started in the book of Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That word still touches me today. In about three minutes, that old man had me off my chair and on my feet. When he finished and I started to leave, I'd gone over with Bishop Mackey. From Miami we pastored in Miami he pastored one church I pastored another and I said brother Mackey who in the world was that old man he just smiled and he said he told me his name told me where he was from said he comes every year to the convention he said, old brother Moss, that was brother Bryce Thompson's dad, when he was the overseer, things would get down, things would get where they just weren't, they weren't gelling, they, they was just not there. He would turn to him, and it didn't matter when, day or night, brother, come up and preach. And he would set that thing back on its path. The things that we look at and the things that we hold dear or we revere or we value or we admire in ourselves has nothing to do with the things of God. But when we turn around and we say, Lord, I esteem, I hold dear, I revere and I value thy word more than my necessary food. For the Bible said, what does it profit a man though he gain the whole world but that he lose his own soul? What, what does it profit? Where does it, where does it, where's the finality of that? What, what good is it that does? I, I watch television or I, I listen to things or tapes or whatever have you of people. And Brother Danny can tell you if you've ministered very long, it doesn't take long for you to know whether that's right or that's not right. Now, I'll admit I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. You can come to me and say, Brother Clark, I didn't know that looked like that. So I thought it looked like this over here. We'll talk about it. And if the way you look at it looked better than what I did, then I'll tell you that. But I watch these and I hear these. And my heart breaks for two things. Number one, they're selling their birthright. We have a birthright and that's in Jesus Christ. He gave us that. 
He did it at Calvary. He gave us a birthright. Now we can reject that and sell it off if we want to. Or we can hold on to it and cling to it and say, I don't care what else comes about. I'm going to hold on to the things of God. That's where we have to be. And I listen to these things, and I said two things come to mind when I hear these. Number one, they're preaching a false doctrine. They know they're preaching a false doctrine. They understand that they're preaching a false doctrine. But because of fame, because of a little money, because I feel like I am important, whatever the cause may be, whatever the circumstance may be, there's no excuse. And the second thing is I look out there and by the tens of thousands, they're following them blindly and they're deceiving and they're doing nothing to enrich these lives but they're giving them a destiny which is hellfire David said therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and I hate Every false way, whatever it is, whatever the problem is. David said, I, 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 I value the precepts of God. When we have a minister get up and preach the Word of God and read from the Word of God, and that Word of God touches our heart and our life, we need to be adherent to it. We need to understand that God is speaking to us, and there's something inside of our life that God wants to correct. David said, whatever it is, I hunger and thirst after that because I don't want to be lost in the end. David said, thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Praise the Lord. I open my mouth and panic. For I longed for thy commandments. I thank God that I'm not a, that God did not put me as a ship with no rudder, no sail, just turned loose out here on the waterways with no direction, no guidance, no pilot, no nothing else, but just go and have a good time. No, sir. That's not what God did, and that's not what he does. I thank God for that. Now, you may say, oh, well, I don't like it. I don't like it when they come up there and say, thou shalt not, and all these other things. Well, let me tell you something. The reason that's in there is that if you do, you're going to have a problem. It's not to keep you from having fun. You mean to tell you the happiest people I've ever been around in my life? Children of God. Amen. You ever been, I call it a shout down meeting. I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about just because somebody sang a pretty song. I'm talking about where the power of God came down. Amen. Not just a feel good service. Now we're going to have a flag march or something. I'm talking about when the power of God comes down and the glory of God fills the place and the Shekinah glory of God begins to touch hearts and lives and people have to get up and they have to move. Why? Because God is in the thing. Amen? I love that. I yearn for that. I long for that. But you know where that starts? Lord, let thy word be a light unto my pathway and a lamp unto my feet I hunger and thirst after the things of God I don't want to be away from what God has for me the second thing when we look at this we understand where uh, in Proverbs where Solomon was talking that the fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I understand the things of God. Why? Because God loves me and he speaks to me. He uh, encourages my heart and my life. He drives that into me day and night. When I rise in the morning, God is there. When I lay down at night, God is there. When I'm out in the world, God is there. There's all kinds of sin. There's all kinds of temptation. There's all kinds of ways that seem right, but we know that those ways are the ways of destruction. Why? Because God's Word has instructed us in that. I'm not left, left alone. I'm not a, a, out here just floating wherever, just kind of just ad hoc whatever. No, sir. I have the Word of God, and that Word of God lives in my heart and my life. Amen. I thank God that every time that I'm over here, and there's something going on that should not be going on. And I'm over there in the middle of it. I come all of a sudden the Spirit of God will say, Boy, you need to run. You want to watch an old fat man run? Be there. Amen. I've got to move. I can't stay there. Why? Because that word is still here. I've heard the word all my life. It was preached. I used to have a pallet. Us kids, that's where we stayed. We were infants. If you were a farmer's daughter's child, when the farm came around, everybody got out. If daddy got out. Mama got out, the farmer got out, everybody got in the field because we had to have the thing done now. We couldn't wait. Mama just got through having a baby. That's good. That's why they made cardboard boxes. Amen. They'd put the cardboard box at the end of the road, throw an old blanket or something inside of it, throw the baby in it, they went to work. You laid there in that box. When we came to church, you didn't say, well, I just had a baby, and so about I get six weeks off, and I have about eight months to wait after that, and about nine more, I'll, and I'll come on in. No. You came in without baby, everybody was all over the baby. Okay. And then when it all got through, here came that nasty old blanket out again. <laughs> Lay that blanket down on the floor, right there under the pew. Throw the baby on it. So all my life, from the time that I was, whoop, throw it on that blanket. I've heard the Word of God. I've heard it preached. I've heard some of the most powerful men of God that's ever been. I thank God for them. I thank God for them. I had an uncle called Ralph Bryant, and if you had not never heard him preach, you need to see if you can find a tape somewhere. You need to hear the Word of God. Amen. There were some men that could just understand the things of God and share that word with you and make your soul become alive. Not because of what they said, but what they said under the anointing of the Spirit of God. You knew it was the word of God and you knew God was putting his anointing upon it. Not what they were saying. They were good speakers. They were quite eloquent, but no. When God's Spirit gets in it, everything changes. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. J. 
James said in the fifth, first chapter, the fifth verse, that if any man, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You need wisdom? You need the Word. You need to understand the Word of God. Well, I don't understand what it's saying. You haven't read it. Well, I read it and I didn't understand it. Well, that's good. Read it again. I still didn't understand it. Read it again. Because after a while, that word will start speaking to you. Because you'll get out of yourself and get out of the things of the world and get what uh, they do in there on that reality TV show and you'll get all that gone and you'll get over here into the Word of God and then the Spirit of God will open that Word unto you. You can't get it on your own. This thing is not of the world. Praise God, it's of God. And you know, James, when he was speaking this, go back up to the second verse. Three minutes. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And I, I love to go back to where Paul was speaking that same thing. Patience worketh what? experience and experience hope you've got to get out here sometimes and hunger and thirst after the things of God ever been in that state where you didn't know what you were going to do next you're asking God come into my life tell me what I need to do show me something you got to esteem the word of his mouth you got to hold it dear. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, we come into this verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. There's always a caveat to something. In other words, you don't just go over here and God go ahead and give it to me. I'll, I'm Okay, I'm here right now. Uh, you know we got to go to the beach pretty quick, but I, right now I'm right here. I mean, if y'all go and tell me, and I'll go with you. But the Bible said, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He won't hold anything from you or against you, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Don't come up there before God and just babbling off things out of your mouth. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is as a way of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Don't go out here and think, well, I, 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 I had family I knew one time. They had some mean young'uns. And Grandma was probably meaner than all the young'uns put together three times. And so they were there, and I was called the preacher. Preacher's here. Y'all act like you're supposed to. I said, no, just act like you always do. I'm, I'm just a preacher. God's the one you're going to have to deal with, not me. Well, this was the saying. If you do anything wrong or you say anything bad or anything of that, stop, ask Jesus to forgive you, and then go on. I said, that may fit right in some circumstances, but when you told it, it was a lie. That's not how this thing works. For let not that man that think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable 
in all his ways. Lord, I esteem thy word more than my necessary food. Whatever it is, you know what he's talking about? Everything of my life, all the gold, silver, all of that means absolutely nothing in comparison to having the word of God, having that word pinned on the tables of my heart. I have to have that. I can't live without it. I hunger and thirst for it. Why? Because my God is so rich, so full, and so free. What a good thing that God gives us. All we have to do is believe on Him. Praise God. Not think about Him. Believe on Him. That's all. He will give you the desires of your heart. What is the desire of your heart today? Is the desire of your heart today to know Him? Paul said, oh, that I may know Him. Paul, you're an apostle. I need to know Jesus. I need to know more of Him. I hunger and I thirst after him why because he's God and it is he that loves me and he that went to Calvary and took my sin and bore it on that hideous cross I love God because he first loved me our Father God in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the season. What, what a hope we have. Lord, there was a baby that was laid in a manger. And oh God, from the very beginning, men came to worship him. Came to give all they had before him. And father, they, father, they fathered him, followed him all the way to Calvary. And Lord, we have seen his rising back into heaven in our heart. And Father, we're anticipating with great expectancy that eastern sky to split any moment and for you to come back and to receive us unto yourself that where you are, we can be also. Father, I pray if there's one that's in this house that doesn't know you in that way, as you are speaking to that heart, Father, I ask them to come and receive. Come and receive. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. And the Bible said that he is just to forgive. We don't have to go to another. He is the just sacrifice. And Father, I ask you right now, be with us this day. Bring us back at your appointed time. Let us remember these that have gone on. Lord, these that are still tender in our hearts, let us be remembered of these. And Father, we'll bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.